hour. And we urge the Senate to look at the issues before it and find that indeed the governor has committed no wrong. People have invested in their reassurance. You cannot wake up just one day to say, but when I fuck clubs, whom do you think you are? Behave, my friend. We can use the power of the people to take you home, my friend. Request the government to take actions on those chiefs and bow what to do when we cut off our areas out. The Hot 96 News now with Gentrix Oduor. Good afternoon. Info track survey conducted on President William Ruto's administration first 100 days in office shows he has scored poorly on his economic pledges. President Ruto has received the lowest scores from Kenyans on matters of lowering the cost of living, making food affordable and accessible to Kenyans. According to InfoTrack, overall score for economic pledges stand at 49.2%. However, the president scored highest on issues of infrastructure structure at 60%, governance at 56%, and gender equality at 53%. Angela Ambito from InfoTrack says on overall, no region has given President Ruto a high score. Kenyans are saying there is a need for improvement. Meru Governor Kawira Mangaza has denied all allegations leveled against her before the Senate Committee hearing her impeachment case. Appearing before the Senate Special Committee probing her ouster, Mangaza pleaded not guilty to all the five charges that informed her impeachment. The five charges include gross misconduct, violation of Public Finance Act, misconduct of nominations in the Assembly of Meru County, among others. Elected on an independent ticket. And this is important, honorable members, because Meru traditionally has been a political region. So for them to elect a woman governor and on an independent ticket, then that should mean something. Unfortunately, the governor faces impeachment, just like the first woman member of parliament in Meru, Honorable Anarita Karemi. And this is a woman who was rounded out of office on Trump tough charges. We are back at it again, and we urge the Senate to look at the issues before it and find that indeed the governor has committed no wrong. We know that there has been much debate about the gender question, but the real issues affecting women leadership and the governor's unique challenge as an easy target for blackmail and subjective application of the law, being an independent candidate should not be swept under the carpet. We are also aware that the county assembly has listed a woman nominated member. The 11 member committee will determine whether accusations leveled against the governor warrant her removal. The committee has up to Friday, December 30th, to deliver its findings. Away from that story, former Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko has pointed an accusing finger at Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja over his directive to ban nightclubs in residential areas. Sonko added that the move has affected business in the capital with thousands on the verge of losing their jobs. He also weighed in on Sakaja's decongestion plans targeting players in the matatu industry. People have invested in their reassurance. You cannot wake up just one day to say, but when I fuck clubs, whom do you think you are? Behave, my friend. We can use the power of the people to take you home, my friend. Motorists, they are business people who have been investing in Nairobi through all these years. So we are just warning you politely, you are our friend, we are ready to support you, respect your party, respect the president, respect the deputy president, respect the great people of Nairobi. Governor Sakaja has been on the receiving end of uh, his plans for the two sectors with the Deputy President Regadi Geshagwa among those who have differed with him in the recent past. Meanwhile, the family of Ngumbao Jala, who died after he was shot during the Ganda by elections in Malindi, Kilifi, has withdrawn from the case. The family led by Rogers Katana Jala says they, they have formally written to the court through their lawyer. The family says they will no longer pursue the matter. They also want charges leveled against Jeffrey Okuto withdrawn. Public uh, Service and Gender CS Aisha Juma is a state witness in the murder case after the DPP made an application to have the case withdrawn. 
also a section of anti-female genital mutilation activists in Korea region, want the government to take legal action against the chiefs, their assistants, the members of the community policing and the elders for any case of AG FGM reported in their areas this year. Gregory Chacha, an anti-FGM activist in Korea region, uh, said some of the girls who have undergone the cut this year reported the issues to the area chiefs, members of the community policing, and even some elders before they were cut, but they failed to take necessary action. The, the government should take action, urgent actions on these people that have practiced the FGM, including the chiefs, Waze uh, Wanyumbakumi, Ambaho Report, the Council of Elders, and the perpetrators themselves. Chacha said they suspect that some chiefs in the region are still supporting FGM silently, hence undermine the fight against the outlawed cultural practice. Some of the chiefs are sleeping in their jobs. If Watoto and Aiza Kuana reportiwa VSI Kwao na Hawachukui Hatua request the government to take actions on those chiefs ambao Watoto wao wamekato kwa area zao. The government has spent a lot of money for the Council of Elders engaging them to end this vice. But still, wameruhusu Watoto kukato. Let the government ask this Council of Elders why have they allowed these things to go kuwa wamekubaliana kuwa inaisha by this year 2022. And three suspects, among them two Tanzanians, have been apprehended by police in Kisumu after they were found in possession of elephant tusks valued at over 500,000 shillings. In a statement from the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, 52-year-old Wilson Correo was arrested together with Tanzanians Jakayam Chubo Paiswa, aged 42, and Lementie Mbukoti, age 27, after they were found with eight pieces of elephant tusks weighing 16 kg. DCI says that the arrest came after detectives in Kisumu received a tip off from an informant and then last with a Kenya Wildlife Service personnel to make the bust. A fourth suspect who is said to have attempted to rescue his accomplices was shot on the arms in the process before he sped off on a motorbike. Meanwhile, the three will remain in custody pending arraignment. That brings us to nine minutes past one. More news at two. For real-time updates, follow us on Twitter at hot underscore 96 Kenya. I'm Jentrick Sodor. Good afternoon. The Hot 96 News.